used to believe that spending more than $250 on clothes at one time was too much. So I would go to the store and I would find all the things that I wanted and I'd go to the till. And if it was $300 or less, I would buy it. But if not, I would say, oh, take this out, take that out. I come from a life of hand-me-downs, lines for food pantry. So when you are raised into that belief system, the only way to rise up out of it is to change your belief system, right? So if we think about any rags to riches story, and I think about The Rock, this one is just so inspiring because he grew up with nothing, absolutely nothing. And he had a rough, um, he had a rough light, rough life. And what's really interesting with him is he held the image of something greater for himself. And so he changed the way he saw himself, even like the persona, the rock. Like he created this like alter ego version of himself with new beliefs and new, um, new extensions of his possibilities for himself. And now like flies private all over the world, has so much money, so many businesses, like is living in abundance and prosperity. And so how does somebody go from living in poverty to absolute abundance and prosperity in their thinking? In their thinking. So most of us are born into lack and limitation thinking, and it's our ability to switch into abundance and prosperity thinking that change everything. So the first question then is to identify what your money story is. So what do you believe to be true about money? What assumptions do you have about it? One thing that's really um, fun to do is <clears throat> to ask yourself the question too, what do I think about rich people? What do I think about rich people? What do I think about people that have a lot of money? What do I think about people that post about the money that they have? What's really interesting is that if you are triggered or activated by someone else having money, it is a reflection of the beliefs that you hold around money within your consciousness. Because if you're inspired by it and you think it's possible for you, you would see it and you'd be like, oh yeah, look at them. Look at them in that beautiful Rolls Royce. That's so great. I'd love to be in a Rolls Royce too. And you'd be inspired. You'd love it. But instead you're like, oh, what a waste of money. That Rolls Royce, it's just a car. Why would they do that? And then um, some people are like, oh, I don't even want any more money. What? Why on earth? And then I say, so if I gave you a million bucks cash right now, you'd say no? They're like, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, so you do. You would love it. So allow yourself to say, yes, I would love it. Yes, I would love it. And you can spend your abundance on anything you want. So you don't have to buy a Rolls Royce. You can buy whatever you want. Maybe it's not even a car at all. Maybe you spend it on travel. Maybe you reinvest it into your business. Maybe you buy properties, whatever. But at least be open to receive the abundance and prosperity. You can spend it on whatever you want, right? But there's also this other belief. When you see people with money and your thought is must be nice, It'll never be happen to me. So Chris and I used to do this when we would do road trips into the mountains in like 2010, we would do this exercise of like, what would we spend our money on if we won 30 mil in the lottery? And we would go into dream mode. I would buy my parents a house for a million bucks. We could buy a house here for a million bucks. We could buy a house in Florida for a million bucks. Like do this, do that. And we would allow ourselves to just get onto the creative plane and think about all the what ifs around winning the, the $30 million lottery. But then we would be like, okay, let's get back to reality. It's not going to happen. It's not possible. And then we would never buy a lottery ticket. So it's really not possible. So I think if you keep your limiting beliefs around money, and if you keep judging those that have money, you are literally not buying the lottery ticket. You are just counting yourself out before you're even giving yourself a chance. So I just want to give you the law of relativity for a minute here. So what if you just decide to believe in some of the things that I say today? What if you decide to remove some limiting money beliefs? 
what if you decide to realize all the abundance and prosperity you already have and be open to receive more? And what if you do that and you end up with more money? Worst case scenario, you don't. Are you further behind? Have you lost anything? No. So you quite literally have nothing to lose and only things to gain. And what I have found along this journey and many of these uh, beautiful students in my community will tell you this, is that upon the journey of making more money, they receive spiritual currency far beyond what money will ever bring you. So what I would, would love for all of you is for us to desire more money to go out and get it. And then on the path towards the realization of it, we awaken, we enlighten, we become happier, we become more joyful. We fall in love with our lives. We fall in love with the world. We fall in love with everyone around us. And that the journey becomes bliss along the allowing and the receiving of more money in our lives. And we have had so many people in our community that have made a significant difference in this world, significant difference in this world, the moment they chose themselves. And they chose to allow themselves to be open to receive more money. And we understand that it is an exchange. You are compensated based on the amount of service that you provide the world. You're compensated. Your dreams will be compensated the more that your dreams change the world. And so you might change the world through the, the sale of your best-selling book. Um, you know, and so it's, it's about the advancement of others in the advancement of ourselves. And our soul's journey really is to experience itself as all of us because we are, we are all one. It's really beautiful. I want us to start off by paying attention to how we feel around money, how we feel around money. So I'm saying this all to say that you deciding to want more abundance and more prosperity in your life changes everything for you, will change the course of your life, will change your family's life, everything, if you allow it. So how bold and daring are you gonna be? And so it starts first by understanding what you believe about money, and then we're going to change it. The You Too Can Be Prosperous book is a very, very important book. It's very, very powerful. It can be uh, something that some people absolutely love. And then some people are like, I, it just does not resonate because of some of the language used. So read it for what it means for you. But what is so imp important is the book is such a shift from one idea to another idea. So the the idea of money was created in someone's mind okay and it was created in somebody's mind because they were doing god's work so the creation of diamond academy it's god's work it, it's it's me answering the call so money is a vehicle to which god's abundance is distributed through and so that means you become an open vessel based on the idea that you are thinking from Okay, so people are like, how do I become an, an open vessel? How do I become an open vessel? Think from a new idea. So universal law says that any idea held in the screen of the mind will manifest into the physical form by law. Any idea. Okay, I love this. An idea is a culmination of thoughts. It's a culmination of beliefs. It's a way of thinking and believing about a thing. So you hold an idea about who you are. You hold an idea about the world. You hold an idea about your business or your job. You hold an idea about your relationship with your spouse, or your significant other. You hold an idea about money. And so that idea about money that you hold is what you think from, what you feel from, and what you express life from. So if your idea in your consciousness right now is lack and limitation, it might not be poverty. You know, we, we sometimes use the language of you either have a poverty consciousness or an abundance consciousness. Well, there is a whole range of beliefs around money and a whole range of different ideas. So you might not be thinking in poverty ways. So you might not call yourself poor. Some people would, but you might not. It doesn't matter. 
the the key to understand is that the idea that you're holding is one of lack and limitation what does limitation mean you're limited you're restricted you're held back you don't have it's not enough that's lack and limitation idea so what would be the opposite idea what would be the other polarity so if you're thinking lack and limitation not enough that is your idea remember the universal law perpetual transmutation of energy any idea held on the screen of the mind will manifest in the physical form by law you cannot make more money in your life you cannot have more abundance and prosperity if you have a lack and limitation idea you can't live a life of love without experiencing love first you can't live a life of joy without experiencing joy first you can't have more things to be grateful for until you're grateful nothing grows from displeasure so we want to move into abundance and prosperity so um you two can be prosperous the word he uses is prosperity the prosperity idea so we can talk about prosperity in terms of money but what we're really talking about is the experience that prosperity provides it's the feeling of prosperity right so is it prosperous to have a hundred thousand dollars sitting in your bank account that you cannot use and you cannot touch is that prosperity has your life changed is it any different you might feel a sense of freedom but you're not living a prosperous life i will never forget the day i met a man and he had 12 million dollars in his bank account and he would not spend a dollar of it. He lived like he made five grand a month. He would not spend any money. He would not go on any trips. He would not invest. He just had 12 mil in his bank account. Why would we do that? Right? Because there was fear, right? There was fear that I need the money there for the just in case, for this, for that, so would never use it. That is not an abundance and prosperity consciousness. That is lack and limitation. I'm so scared that the money will not come back to me. I can't spend it. Not abundance and prosperity, right? So the beautiful thing then is the prosperity idea. What is prosperity? I've already seen it in the chat. Prosperity is what you have when the money is spent. So prosperity is taking your kids to Disneyland. Prosperity is going on that vacation. Prosperity is buying the car. Prosperity is in investing into a course. Prosperity is going on the retreat. Prosperity is going and buying a new outfit, new wardrobe. So prosperity is a feeling. It's a state of being that you experience when you are thinking from the idea of abundance and prosperity. So the idea of abundance and prosperity says there is always more where that came from. There is always more where that came from. That belief is one that will serve you. So remember Niagara Falls. Are we standing there looking at Niagara Falls going, I wonder when it's going to run out. I wonder when it's going to stop. Could it be right now? Is it going to be right now? Let's see. No. We're literally going, wow, this is so amazing. And it just keeps going. It's just never ending. This is so incredible. That's the belief. So I will use water a lot as an example because we have resources, infinite resources that are at our disposal around the world, infinite resources at our disposal. And when we realize that these resources are infinite, then we allow ourselves to have that experience of infinite resources. So to say that access to clean water is a supply issue is not entirely true, right? How is it that there are countries that have access to it and there are countries that do not? And we have so much access to it that we actually will have a shower in it for 30 minutes. Yeah, some of you take 30 minute showers. I'm a mother, so I learned how to get it done in three to five minutes. 
the men are in there 20 to 30 minutes. <laughs> I joke about this. But it's so it's it's so true. And so when you go to your kitchen and you are washing your dishes or you're filling up a glass of water, you open up the tap, you see water come out, you fill up your glass, you drink it, knowing you could just go and fill it back up. So a true abundance and prosperity mindset would be the same thing. So I have a certain amount of money in my bank account. I'm going to spend it just like drink it, knowing it will fill back up. So Wendy talked about how she always had just enough. That statement, I always had just enough. That's law of infinite supply. So she always had just enough for her demand to be fulfilled. Right? That's good. That's abundance. But now you just got to learn to create a bigger demand, open up your vessel, be more open to receive and have that same belief. I always have enough. I always have enough. Then you'll move into my bank account is overflowing. I have more money than I can spend. So one of the things that Robert Russell says, uh, page 43, all of you are always going to ask me what page, page 43, 10 things to remember when demonstrating uh, prosperity. So these are really, really beautiful list of 10 things. The mental process necessary to a greater income is a matter of recognition, acceptance, and belief. This mental experience must precede any material manifestation. So how do you create the demand in your thinking? This is how you create the demand in your thinking first. I'm thinking abundance. I'm thinking prosperity. I'm thinking more. And so if you're not even asking for more money, you're not open to receive more. Impossible. You're not creating demand. You're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. So instead, grateful, never satisfied. I am grateful, never satisfied. Because when you're grateful, you are connected to your oneness. You're connected to the divine. The gratitude for everything that you have makes you an open vessel. When you're grateful for it, you will get more of it. You will get more of what you are grateful for. The things that you value the most in life will stay close to you. And the things that you don't value will move away from you. So you must value money. You must value it. And so we're creating an assumption then that the more money I have, the more money I spend. The more money I spend, the more money I make. That's a beautiful, beautiful analogy. I used to believe valuing money meant keeping it. No. To me, valuing money is to understand that it is to be used and it is to be in circulation. You have to keep it in flow and you have to keep it in movement. So if you haven't spent money for a while, it's like, oh, I better go spend some. I better move the flow. I got to keep it moving. You don't want it to be stale. You don't want it to be stagnant. You want to keep it in flow and you want to keep it in movement. So every time you get to pay a bill, you're like, yes, I get to move my energy today. I get to spend some money today. But most of us are like, oh man, I got to pay this bill. I don't want to pay this bill. But yeah, you do want to pay the bill. Like you do want electricity. You do want lights in your house. You do want air conditioning if it's the middle of summer. You do want to pay for the car that you get to drive around all day and pick your kids up from school and take them to soccer. You do. So why are we saying we don't? We have chosen to get those things to be part of the demand to fill. So we do want all of those things. And so why are we not in gratitude for it? Let's be grateful. And then we become a vibrational match to more. Because when you have more, what feeling are you in? What's the feeling that you will be in when you have more? You will be grateful. You will be happy. You will be in joy. You will have freedom. You will feel ease and relaxation, peace, calmness, yeah, security. So we want to feel that way now about money, right? So gratitude is such a beautiful way to connect. But the demand happens in your thinking. So we want to think abundance and prosperity and not think lack and limitation. 
So number one question I get, how do you think and feel from abundance and prosperity when you have no money? Okay, this is the number one. I always get this question. So the assumption there is that you are abundant and prosperous from having money, right? So the assumption is that it's the money that makes me feel abundance. It's the money that makes me feel prosperous. And without money, I'm not abundant and I'm not prosperous. So that's the assumption in that question. But we know that everything starts in the mind. So in order for someone to become abundant and prosperous, they needed to think that first, not experience it. How can you bring money into your life if you are in lack and limitation and not open to receive? You can't. So you must think abundance and prosperity first. So how can you think abundance and prosperity without any money? What are ways that you can observe abundance playing out in your life every day and it not be related to money? Because we're talking about a feeling. We're not talking about a possession. We're talking about a feeling. Abundance and prosperity is a feeling. And we operate on the frequency of vibration of that feeling. It's a feeling. We become a match to that feeling and we attract based on that feeling. You don't need money in your bank account to have the feeling. You can go into your imagination right now and you can play out a scenario where you win the lotto and all those things that I described that Chris and I used to do, but stay there and believe it and you will change your vibrational state. But there's other ways too. It doesn't, it doesn't just need to be your imagination. You can actually observe your world and find abundance and prosperity in your world right now. Tell me about something that you experience in your everyday life right now that's abundance. There is an abundance of money in the world. Your individual experience with it is what limits you. So when we look at the world and we look at all the money around and we realize how much there is, and then we go to ourselves and we go, but I don't have it. That's my experience we've limited, we've contracted. So I, I remember touring, my team got to tour this house too, a $68 million mansion in Bel Air. It's 20,000 square feet. I think like nine bedrooms or something like that. The most stunning thing ever. And somebody there says, I wouldn't want to live in here. It's too big. I was like, how dare you? Why would you say something like that? You just told the universe that you do not want abundance. You don't want that much space. It's too big. And you're saying, no, thank you. I said, no way, Jose. I, so what do I say? Universe, I am open to receive this level of abundance. Once the level of abundance comes, I can choose if I want to spend it on a house like this or not. But I am never going to limit myself by saying something like that. Right? Uh, just on the beach. Well, that was my thought, Jen. Where's the ocean? Like, I would love the ocean. But if any and all things are possible, what would you love? You know? So for me, it's just about I don't want to remove any limitations. So I'm never going to say I don't want that or I wouldn't want that experience or whatever. I'm just going to say, I'm open to receive that level of abundance. And so there's one thing to be said around thinking from a new idea. And then people ask me, okay, how do I become more open to receive? Be open to receive. So when somebody takes you out for dinner and they want to pay for it, you say, thank you. I'm open to receive. I had to consciously tell myself this. Like I was at a point where you know, if I'm being totally honest, like I make a lot more money than a lot of people in my life do. And not a lot of people are at the level of abundance as me. So one of the things that I am so grateful to be able to do is to pay for dinner whenever I can. So I go out for people and I, I go out for dinner and I always just assume I'm paying. I'm like, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay. And so I was just paying and paying and paying and paying and it felt good and I loved it. 
And then I went for lunch with somebody one day and they were like, I, I want, I want to pay for lunch. And I was like, no, I'll pay. Like, I'm like, I make more money. I'll pay. And they looked at me and they were like, be open to receive Kathleen. This is what I want to do. And I was like, oh, it's not about me. This is a way for you to circulate money. This is a way for you to feel abundant and prosperous. This is a way for you to be open to receive. And I'm blocking it. And then what I realized is then I'm not open to receive because I'm just giving. So we want to give, but we want to be open to receive. So if somebody wants to give you something, if somebody wants to take you somewhere, you say, yes, please. Thank you very much. It's just like compliments. People want to give us compliments and then we're like, oh, this old thing or like, oh, oh I don't look good today or oh, I didn't put any makeup on. No, receive, say thank you. When you just say thank you, you're open to receive. Sometimes I'll say, I'll take that. Thank you. I'll receive that. So add that language. I'll receive that. I'm open to receive. Change that language. It's a really, really powerful language. I want to read one other thing <clears throat> from this one too. Okay. Um, so poverty is a state of mind. We bring about this manifestation by our negative rec recognition, acceptance, and belief. So recognizing poverty, accepting poverty, and believing you are in poverty will manifest it. So then recognizing abundance all around you, accepting abundance into your life, and the belief that you are abundant will create that reality. It's really, really simple. We overcome poverty by mastering the sense of every kind of lack. Do we get that? In order for you to experience abundance, you must experience lack. And you must therefore become aware of and sense the lack and limitation in your life to then change it to abundance and prosperity. So if you don't realize or are aware of a limitation, you will never be able to shift it. Some of the most powerful work I've ever done is writing out my limitations. Where do I feel limited in my life? Because it is an awareness of what I'm observing and then creating assumptions from. And then I can just turn around those assumptions. Is this true? This is what I want you to do. I want you to observe yourself. I want you to observe your limits. Don't judge, just observe. Because then you can switch to abundance and prosperity. A final word that I use all the time, and I think it is a very, very good one for you to start to use in your life. I convinced myself I was a millionaire and the millions of dollars came. I convinced myself. What does it mean to convince yourself? We convince ourselves of things all the time. We convince ourselves that our business will not be successful, so we never start it. We convince ourselves that we can't afford to go to the rise retreat, so we never ask to go. So convincing yourself of something is building a significant belief within yourself that you literally express your life differently. You attract and manifest from that experience differently and you will see the realization. I believe wholeheartedly 100% that anything that I may that I maintain a persistent attitude of desire for, I will have. No matter what. So in times when the doubt creeps in, isn't that so helpful? Because I just remind myself who I am. And I remind myself of what I believe. Oh, my human is out today. Fear, worry, doubt. That's my human. That's not my spirit. When I'm in a state of joy, love, happiness, abundance, faith, I call it faith on fire. Faith on fire is an energy that I am completely unstoppable in. 
faith on fire. So what does that mean? Fire to me represents a burning, an engulfing, a all encompassing feeling. So when I am faith on fire, you can't stop me. I am like, oof, I am blazing a trail and it is led by faith. So there's nothing in my physical world that's creating that, that all comes from within. I've decided to believe in the invisible. I've decided to believe in the impossible. I've decided to make the impossible po possible in my own thinking. I've convinced myself of such. Right? So convincing yourself that you are living an abundant and prosperous life right now today will bring you more abundance and prosperity. But let's pull out the limitations. So once we understand where we're limited related to money, we allow ourselves to want more of it and believe that we're worthy of receiving it. And we start to think from a new idea, we have to change our action. The last thing that I will say too, is that there is a version of you that exists already that is living an abundant, prosperous life that has a lot of money okay? not just happiness and joy and love, but has all of those things plus money in the bank, an overflow of money in the bank. That version of you exists. You just have to become aware of them. Allow yourself to fuse with the belief of them. And that's how you will bring it in. <laughs>